This is Valley News Live at 5. Good evening, everyone. It's a first alert weather day with smoke threatening many of us in the valley. Let's head straight to Hutch tonight with the latest. Hutch. Stacey, thanks so much indeed. First alert weather day today for heat and for smoke. And we have in areas both. It started out with the thickest of the smoke right here in the valley. You can see it on our time lapse. This one uh, up in the Grand Forks area with just murky skies and it got thicker in Fargo after 11 o'clock at night. And look at this even down at the Dakota Magic Casino. Some thick smoke. That's how we started, but there's been some good news to report on this first alert weather day. Some rain showers passing through northwest portions of Minnesota and right now Lake of the Woods down in towards that uh, Walker area. A few showers here cleansing the atmosphere a little bit and also south winds starting to return the heat to the valley. Temperatures climbing in Fargo 85. Still cool where we have showers, but look at this triple digits in Pier and uh, North Dakota's capital as well. That's heading our way. So the heat is on smoke taking a little bit of a break. Here's a look at those levels right now. We are still uh, in that orange category. That's unhealthy. But uh, that's better than we were this morning. Now, hour by hour details on the heat that's heading our way coming up in a bit with but with more on how you can protect yourself during all of this nasty air to breathe. Summer Schnellbach joins us now for team coverage. Summer. Thanks, Hutch. First and foremost, if you are still having trouble breathing today, you need to seek medical attention right away. But the Federal Emergency Management Agency says uh, the air is manageable across the region for many, but there are some easy steps that you can take to protect yourself from the smoke as it will be filtering in and out throughout the, su the summer. Use an N95 respirator. FEMA adds that the surgical cloth dust masks will not help to protect yourself against smoke pollution. The N95 masks have a filter that will block out those particles. You may also consider replacing the air filter inside of your home as smoke can seep into small cracks in doors, windows, and even air conditioning units. Another one, if you're a fan of exercising outdoors, going for those runs, you might want to take the day off and do it inside for today. We'll most likely see more of these hazy days continue throughout the rest of the summer while these wildfires continue to burn and the drought offers no relief. Stacy. Thanks so much, Summer. We're learning more about the man who investigators say kidnapped two young girls from a park earlier this month. He's already facing a laundry list of sex charges against minors across the state. 19 year old Julio Clausen was charged with contributing to the delinquency of a child and underage alcohol possession back in February after police broke up a party at his apartment with 10 young teens present. He was also charged with three counts of criminal sexual conduct in October 2020 after being accused of sexually assaulting girls in his car. The woman convicted of helping cover up a Moorhead teen's gruesome murder is back in jail. Andrea Payne was sentenced in May for helping Ethan Broad cover up the murder of Destiny Avery. She spent just over a year in the Clay County Jail before sentencing, where she was given credit for time served and put on probation. Jail records so show she was arrested yesterday after police spent a month looking for her. She'll be back in court on Monday. Fargo police are looking for a man who crashed his car into an apartment building, injuring a woman and a baby and then running off. A witness caught the driver running from the scene just before noon. Fargo police say the man lost control, crashing into an apartment complex on 48th Street South, right behind Shields. The woman and baby in the apartment were taken to the hospital. They're expected to be OK. Police are looking for that driver, saying he's African-American and was wearing a red sweatshirt, jeans and red shoes. If you have any information, call Fargo police. Two Fargo residents are speaking out, saying their downtown homes have been blocked in by city and apartment construction. As Valley News team's JC Dodd discovered, they say it's gone far beyond inconvenient. Is this annoying? The encaged in? Absolutely. But when the safety of our families are at risk, that's another problem. Crystal Johnson and Tara Schmidt both lost street access to their homes when the city began construction on 11th Street North in May. In the beginning, the alley was open. We have our driveway back there, so it really didn't bother us too much. But on Monday, apartment construction behind their homes tore up the entrance to their alley, meaning the families no longer have direct access to their homes on either side. We're used to being inconvenienced. That's life. This is a safety issue now. Johnson is worried about the limited access first responders would have if something were to happen. You look around us, we are literally fenced in. 
And Schmidt is worried about how far she has to park and walk to get home. I don't feel comfortable having to truck my kids around the down the streets of Broadway down here to get to my home when we have sufficient parking and back. Both women say they have struggled to get straight answers from both the city and the Kilbourne group, the group behind the apartment construction. City engineer Kevin Gordon says he understands the inconvenience it poses on the family, but they work with first responders to ensure they have direct access. Schmidt says she just wishes one of the projects could have waited until the other was complete. When it comes to safety of the family, that's where we draw the line. City engineers say the alley should be open by July 31st, and 11th Street North is set to be complete by mid-August. In downtown Fargo, J.C. Dodd, Valley News Live. City engineers say the alley was needed to install a stormwater collection system. We reached out to the Kilbourne Group, but haven't heard back. If you need help with an issue, call our whistleblower hotline at 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case. A judge overseeing these civil lawsuits in the Surfside condo collapse says victims and their families do not have to donate their belongings for public good. The matter was discussed during a status hearing today, but the judge went on to say that the court's only task is to compensate the victims of the tragedy. So far, 97 bodies have been recovered. 95 have been identified. Authorities say they'll keep searching until all human remains are found. North Dakota Representative Kelly Armstrong has been removed from the January 6th investigative committee just a few days after he was named to it. U.S. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy pulled him and the five other Republican appointees. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi rejected two of McCarthy's selections, Representatives Jim Jordan and Jim Banks. In retaliation, McCarthy decided to pull all of his selections, including Armstrong. Armstrong said he hoped the investigation would be about fact-finding and keep politics out of it. I don't think this committee is about the last election. I don't even think it's about the next election. It's about the Speaker's office maintaining an absolute iron grip on her conference in the People's House for the next 18 months. Now, Republicans are threatening to not participate in the investigation until all five of the original Republican selections are appointed to the committee. Minnesota House Speaker Melissa Hortman says she's not planning any immediate ethics action against embattled Representative John Thompson. She told the House Minority Leader in a letter today that she'd refer any complaint to the House Ethics Committee. Hortman and other top Democrats called for Thompson to resign after domestic abuse allegations surfaced last week, but Hortman says she won't take action until after Thompson's court proceedings on other matters. Officials in the Northern Valley are asking you to stop accidentally calling 911. The Beltrami County Sheriff's Office says they've seen an explosion of 911 hang up calls after an iPhone update that allows for easier emergency calls without having to unlock your phone. The Sheriff's Office says it's easy to trigger a call by dropping your phone or bumping into something while it's in your pocket. However, it becomes a real problem when you don't clear things up with emergency responders. You'll get a call to make sure you're okay. If you don't respond, they'll have to send an officer to find you. We have instructions on how to disable that feature on our website. You'll hear and see them again soon. The Blue Angels will be practicing for the upcoming Fargo Air Show that'll take place this weekend. Despite the hazy conditions, streets around the Hector International Airport will be closed tomorrow and Friday from 1145 in the morning to 5. For a full list of road closures and to find more information about the air show, log on to our website, valleynewslive.com or the free VNL News app. Just two days left of the United Way school supply drive and they need your help. The goal is to provide 6,000 students with the supplies they need to get the school year off to a good start. They're only halfway there and they say these last couple days are critical. They hope to have a wide variety of backpacks so all kids walk away excited for this new school year. We try to have a variety of backpacks so students can come up and find one that meets their needs. So whether you're into superheroes or rainbows, we've got them all out there. If you'd like to help, you can give a financial donation online or drop off school supplies at Shields Arena by 3 p.m. this Friday. Coming up, travel restrictions being extended. We'll tell you how much longer before we can welcome our neighbors to the north. On this Wednesday evening, smoke levels for some, even in the FM area, still unhealthy for some. Temperatures will stay in those mid and falling, mid 80s and falling as we go through the evening with a fair amount of cloud cover. South winds starting to sweep the smoke away, but the heat is on. I'll have details in your hour by hour forecast weather is next.